In 1854, a deadly disease called cholera was rapidly spreading through the Soho district of London. If you got cholera, one minute you'd feel completely fine, and then the next minute you'd be vomiting and pooping uncontrollably until your body loses around 20 litres of water. You also have a 50% chance of dying. So the cholera plague is spread through a bad smell called miasma, and it will creep up on you when you least expect it. Um, actually, that's wrong. Shut up, John! This is why you have no friends and your dad left you! John Snow, no not that one, was a medical apprentice in Newcastle treating patients who contracted cholera. The common belief at the time was that cholera spread through bad smells, so the only way to protect yourself was by wearing a mask full of sweet smelling flowers. But John noticed that there were still plenty of people who were perfectly clean, taking their one bath per month, who still somehow got sick and died. John knew his professors were wrong about cholera, but it wasn't until almost two decades later when John was living in Soho, London, when he finally got the opportunity to test his theories. Yes! I mean, um, oh how awful. A new cholera epidemic was breaking out in his hometown, so John carried out geospatial data collection, which is a fancy way of saying he asked everyone in Soho if they had cholera. It wasn't as easy as putting a post out on Facebook asking where the cholera boys are. He had to do it the old fashioned way, going door to door, asking each person if they had the disease and plotting it on a map. This was the map he drew. As expected, cases were centralized around one point and then got rarer as you spread out. In other words, as the distance R away from the center increases, the density of cases decreases. So we can say that the density is inversely proportional to R squared. But the density of cases doesn't just decrease, it decreases exponentially as you move away from that point. So we're gonna raise this to the power E. Finally, because this is inversely proportional, we need to get one over this, which is the same as raising it to the negative power. Now John has an equation to predict the likelihood you have cholera given your distance away from the center. If you're a statistician, you might use some fancy equations to find out where the maximum is. But John Snow used a complicated method called looking with his eyes to find out that the central maximum is right here. But there were a few exceptions the men who worked at the warehouse and the men who worked at the brewery. So first, John went to the warehouse and he discovered that the warehouse workers had their own well to drink water. Then he went to the brewery and discovered that the men at the brewery were drinking, but just not water. There was also one woman who recently moved away from Soho, but she still preferred the taste of the Soho water pump. So she brought water that was five miles away from her home because according to her, it was sweeter. She also got cholera. But why were all the townsfolk of Soho getting sick from drinking water? Remember that one baby that shat himself to death? Well, it turns out that that one baby's family lived right next to the Soho water pump, and they also had their own underground cesspits where they disposed of their, um, waste. When Jon Snow investigated the cesspit, he found cracks in the walls which leaked the family's sewage into the town's drinking water. That's right, Soho London was drinking a baby's diluted poo, and apparently it tasted sweet. Yes, tastes like cholera. <laughs> this one poopy boy was responsible for an epidemic of cholera which killed over 600 people. I'm glad that at least nowadays we aren't chucking raw sewage out into open water. Oh, never mind. So now you know how a physician used statistics to stop people from drinking crap and cured Soho's cholera problem. Click on this video if you want to see more. And piss off.